Ipana Toothpaste and Sal Hepatica present... Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney is brought to you by Ipana Toothpaste and Sal Hepatica. Ipana for the smile of beauty, Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Ipana, Sal Hepatica. And it shall be my duty as district attorney, now to prosecute to the letter of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. In our experience, in our war against crime, ladies and gentlemen, nothing in the popular conception of crime is so widespread and so erroneous as the idea that honor exists among thieves. In tonight's case of the deadly snowflake, we see this so-called criminal code for what it is, a cold, stubborn, selfish fear based on a colossal contempt for decency. We begin in a bedroom darkened by shades drawn tight to the sill. Agnes. Agnes, is that you? Go back to sleep, Blair. The doc says you should rest. Ah, him a doc. They threw him out years ago. Did you talk to him, Agnes? They told me not to. Don't you think you'd better? What's the matter? Get the bandages off your head, huh? I'm lucky I'm alive, he said, Agnes. That cop's bullet went right across my skull. I know. You're lucky you got home. I still got my fingers, too. That's real talent, Agnes. One in a million. What do you mean you still got your fingers? I'll, uh... I'll get to that. First, I... I just want to say I'm sorry about... Well, about the way I've been treating you. You what? Uh, I don't mean to... Well, knock you around, Agnes. I, I just get nervous when I'm going out on a job. What's come over you, Leah? Uh, you know how it is... Feeling those tumblers fall with your fingers? It's tough work, Agnes. Oh, uh, that reminds me. What? I want you to get hold of a guy. You remember him? Rudy Bowie? Oh. Oh. What's the matter? Nothing. I just haven't heard you mention Rudy in so long. What do you need him for? To help me. I've got to get back to work, Agnes. We'll be needing dough. We could sell that crazy boat. The snowflake? No, I mean big dough. More jobs, Agnes. Like that transfer office I had cased out. I don't see what you need Rudy for. He's no safe man. I don't need a Peterman, Agnes. Just a helper. Someone to... to take me around. Take you around? Fred, what do you mean? Agnes, I... There's something the matter. Now, what is it, Larry? I'm blind. <laughs> There's a few more, Chief. Squad D report the total arrest on the arson case. Oh, yes, I know, Miss Miller. Send a copy of the findings over to the commissioner, if you will. It's on the way. Good. Well, what about you, Harrington? Anything on that warehouse robbery? Chief, I've been over that job with a fine-tooth comb. I pulled McHenry out of his prowl car all day yesterday just to get his story again. Uh, Mac Henry is the officer who shot at the men as they escaped, Chief. Well, yeah, shot and missed, I'm sorry to say, Chief. Missed completely? I thought the officer's report a week ago indicated that he might have hit one of the men. Yeah, that's right, Chief, he might, but nobody's been showing up dead in any of the alleys, though. Yes, and that adds up to what? You've no idea at all? Well, if... Just one, Chief. Yeah, and I'll say this before I start, Miss Miller. It ain't scientific. Harrington, I haven't said a word. I know it, but you will, you will. The point is, Chief, I want to... Well, I want to play this one on a hunch. Oh. Well, we've played your hunches before, haven't we? Yeah. Yes, and we've good results, too. What's your thought? Okay, let's go back to this warehouse job for a minute, okay? 
I don't have to. The warehouse people have been on the phone about it all week. So what was it? A Peterman job. Am I right? No powder, no dynamite, no blasting. Just a straight Peterman. A what? A Peterman, Miss Miller. A man who opens safes. Oh. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Chief, I went over that warehouse safe 20 times. The guy opened it with his fingers. Yes, yes. You put that in your original report. Right. Now think about this then. Feeling for those tumblers ain't easy, you know. That's very delicate work. You gotta be trained to it. Yes, go on. Okay, so it comes down to this, Chief. There's three guys I know who could have fingered a safe the way that warehouse job came off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of them's in the happy house. Yes, and the other two? One's in California, Chief. At least I think he is. I'm checking on it. Yeah, and the other? Uh Uh-huh, the other. The boy named Morton. Laird Morton. I got his file out of the master, Miss Muller. Is that M-O-R-T-O-N? That's right. He's been quiet for a couple of years, Chief. Might take me time to find him. Now, let me get this straight. You really think you can narrow down that warehouse robbery to certain individuals just on... On On technique, Chief. And like I said, on a hunch, too. So, well, can I go on? You've nothing else? Mm -hmm. No witnesses? Fingerprints? Nothing? No, not so far, Chief. I see. All right. I'll hold it over on the disposition report, Harrington. We'll say, how about three days? Starting now, Chief? Starting now. Let's see what this hunch of yours will do. Agnes. I'm right in front of you, Lear. Don't get to jump. I'm sorry. It bothers me when you move around, that's all. You here, Rudy? Yeah, just waiting for what you say, Laird. Go on, Laird. Say what you got to say. All right, we won't waste any more time. You can lead me into the transfer office, Rudy. The way I time it, it should be three minutes from the car to the safe. Yeah, if we have luck with the watchman, Laird. Never mind him. Now, you both got this picture? You lead me. Give me, oh, say, six minutes with the tumblers, and then we beat it. Back to our car? That's right, Agnes. From there, we go directly to the snowflake. To the what? Laird's boat. I don't get it. Can you think of a better place to hide out, Rudy? We get aboard, shove off, we can cruise around for weeks. She sleeps, Six. She? His boat. He bought it off some jerk during the war. Yeah. Oh, well, you see her, Rudy. I bought it complete. Right down to the gear and galley. Uh, Sure. Well, I mean, Laird, uh, we make the getaway on a boat? I told you, it's the safest place in the world. She's all set, too. Agnes saw everything, didn't you? I checked all the papers in your billfold there. Swell. Well, now I guess I'll get a little sleep. Big day tomorrow, huh, Rudy? Yeah, whatever you say, Laird. Want some help? No, I can make it. I've been practicing, haven't I, Agnes? Go ahead, show him. Uh, Laird, watch it. I'll be all right, Rudy. You sit with Agnes. Three steps to the left. Turn and... Hey, Agnes, shut up. He's... Forward. Forward. Yeah. Where, are you all right? Yeah. Sit still, Rudy. I I misjudged, I guess. I'll be fine. Good night now. Want a drink? What's the idea, Agnes? You let him walk right into that chair. I know. I forgot to tell him I moved it. Yeah. Never mind the drink. Hold still. Rudy, listen. Still, I said. What was that for? Just wanted to be sure of something. Are you? Yeah, I'm sure. Is it your idea? Laird sending for me when he was blind. I just said it was a good idea. He doesn't know then? But, uh... Four? Yep. Don't be funny. I'm not. I'm just getting organized, Agnes. You're watching things around here the last few days. It strikes me you're, uh... For uh, what? You've changed. Laird used to push you around like a lawnmower. That was before he lost his papers. Yeah, yeah. So now you let him walk into chairs. That ain't all he's walking into. I got it all planned. The transfer office job, the boat, everything. 
What is he walking into, Agnes? Rudy. Yeah? Now it's your turn to hold still. Baby, I... Still want to know what he's walking into? Guess. Okay, Chief, so it boils down to this. Yes. Either that warehouse job was a complete outsider, or it's my boy. Laird Morton, you mean, Harrington. Right, and I'm taking bets it was no outside rip and tear job. What makes you say that, Harrington? Because, Miss Miller, when a bunch of the boys plan a job the size of that warehouse deal, they line it up, see? And if they're from out of town, well, they get permission. Permission to break open a safe? From whom? From the boys in this town that know about things like safes. Yes, and they're pretty well cleaned out, aren't they? Aren't they, they are, Chief. And that's why, again, I think Laird's my boy. You know how to find him? Well, he's been off my books now for nearly three years, Chief. But I can find him. At least here's where I try. <laughs> No, oh, I'll shoot your game some other time, Harry. Yeah, and with no chalk on my cue, too. Oh, hey, hey, before I forget it, uh, you ever hear from Morton? Yeah, Morton, you know, he used to play snooker in here. Laird Morton. Give me three, will you, Rusty? No, 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 the Panatella is the only good cigar you got. Hey, oh, Rusty. Uh, Harry over at the billiard joint says, maybe that you heard from Laird. Yeah, Morton. Come on, Rusty, you know him. Laird Morton. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry to get you out of rehearsal, Maisie. Find a new number, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good, too. Oh, oh, I know now what I meant to ask you, Maisie. You used to go around with Laird Morton, didn't you? I mean, back before he got married? <laughs> uh, well, tell me something, kid. Does he owe you any dough? Pretty all clear, lad. I look both ways. What about the watchman, Rudy? Is he in the office? What office? I told you a dozen times, Agnes. It should be straight ahead of us, up the steps and to the right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it, lad. No light on. Okay. That's it, then. Let's go in. You got him, Rudy. Yeah, I am. That's it. Keep hold of my coat, lad. It won't fall. Remember now, both of you, we come right back to the car and drive directly to the boat. We know that. Go on, Rudy. Door's open. I told you it would be. The watchman leaves it unlatched till 2 a.m. What's the matter? It's it around your neck, lad. What? These, these, these. I got hold of them. Go on in, will you? Somebody will walk by in a minute. They're binoculars, Rudy. You'll need a good pair on the boat. He's still there. Rudy's opening that door. Okay. So far. Now we take the first door to the right, huh? It'll be open, too. Go on. Try it. Like a barn. Look for the safe, Rudy. Is it there? It should be over in the corner. I see it. All right. Lead me to it. Come on, make it fast. That snooper gets back here every 20 minutes. It's right here, Laird. You feel it? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Shut that door, Agnes. What? Well, we come in. I didn't hear it shut. I got it. I... Can you open it, Laird? In a breeze. Just let me warm up my fingers. What's the door, Agnes? Don't worry about me. Anybody comes through it, I'm ready for him. Can you imagine a big transfer company owning a safe like this? The tumblers fall like bowling pins. Two more minutes and they'll have it. Agnes. Shut up, I hear it. Laird, somebody's at the door. What? Can't be. We come in at one five, didn't we? I must have got it mixed up, Laird. Rudy, stand back. Be careful with that one. Agnes. She got a light? No, he hasn't. Come on in, Grandpa. Welcome home. I told you I had this planned. Come on, give me your hand, Agnes. We've got to get out of here fast. Go on. Yeah, I'm going. Take it down to the car fast. Agnes, take my hand. Sorry, Laird, I ain't got the time. Agnes, 
You're not leaving me here. Agnes, no, you can't. Can't I? Watch me. Just watch me. Oh, I forgot you're blind. Hey, hey, Agnes! Hey, hey, Agnes, come back! I can't see! Agnes, no! No! <laughs> Laird Morton, blinded safe cracker, deserted at the scene of a murder. We'll hear the next exciting development of this unusual case in just a moment. But first, let's bend an ear to one of those early morning sounds. One that says, rise and shine. Now, of course, sometimes you may not feel like rising and shining. Like most all of us, you may wake up feeling dull and headachey because you need a laxative. In that case, better tune in on this sound. And that's the sparkling sound of sal hepatica in a glass of water. And remember, unlike slow-acting laxatives, a sparkling glass of sal hepatica, when you get up, brings quick, gentle relief, usually within an hour. That means you don't have to feel dull and headachey all day, waiting until night to take the laxative you needed in the morning. And if at the same time you're troubled with excess gastric acidity... Let Sal Hepatica help sweeten your stomach. So keep a bottle of Sal Hepatica handy. Then any time you need a laxative... Morning, noon, or night... See how much faster you feel better thanks to gentle, speedy Sal Hepatica. And now back to Mr. District Attorney... The reporters are going to wave, Harrington. I'll say they are, Chief. Somebody tipped them to the angle in this thing. The angle, Harrington? Well, wouldn't you call it one, Miss Miller? A watchman gets killed. The prowl car boys come looking for him. And they find a blind man yelling his head off. Yes, as I put it together, the watchman must have been shot about 1 or 110. Well, by that, Chief, he was supposed to punch his clock at 115, and he didn't. Yes, I know. Then when he didn't report at 130, our men came in to investigate. (laughs) Some investigation. A dead watchman and Laird Morton, blind. Oh, Chief, he's being booked downtown. They'll hold him in your office until we get there. Yes, thank you, Miss Miller. Well, Harrington, where do we start? No gun, huh, Chief? None so far. Did you tell the men to search the yard outside? Yeah, Brophy's out there, Chief. If Morton tossed the gun out the window, we'll find it. Well, how could he if he's blind? Eh, that, Miss Miller, is the the break-the-bank question. Brother, what a lot of talking he's going to do. I hope so. There's one thing in particular I'm curious about. Yeah, which one, Chief? If Morton is blind, what was he doing with a pair of binoculars around his neck? Cockpit, Rudy. Cold. Oh, uh, this one? There's only one. Shut it. Well, how should I know? I ain't never been on a boat. Well, you are now. Like it? Yeah. Uh, steer it with that? Sure. It isn't hard. Laird taught me. Okay, so we're moving. Now, where does it go? Any place. I figured we'd just keep cruising around for a while. You know, I'll let things cool down. And what happens when this crate runs out of gas? We buy some more. It's easy. They got gas pumps all along the shore. Well, I still don't like it, Agnes. None of it. It's set up, I tell you. I got all the dough from Laird's warehouse job before. Well, I wondered why we didn't wait and grab the loot at the transfer office. What for? We got plenty. Besides, that it only stick the insurance dicks on us. They can get nasty, too, you know. This way we're clear. And, uh, what about Laird? He won't talk, if that's what you mean. Well, why won't he? You killed that watchman, Agnes, not him. What's he going to lose by talk? You think I didn't figure? Listen, so they found him with a dead duck, all right. He's blind. No court in the world is convicted. Yeah, Laird but... knows that. So do the cops. I still say it would have been... I ain't finished. Finally, they got to find the gun, don't they? I know that much from the movies. Hey, you still got it, haven't you? Certainly I got it. Right here. Come on, Rudy. Relax. 
What is it Laird was always saying? Oh, yeah, get a load of that air. <laughs> Now listen to reason, Morton. That watchman was killed with a thirty-two caliber slug. He was. Look at the district attorney when you're talking, Morton. I'm tired of looking at him. We've been at this four hours. You're tired of looking, huh? With what? Are you really blind, Morton? You know, we'll be certain when the doctor gets here. Am I? What do you think, D.A.? I think you are. And so do I, Morton. Yeah, and I'll tell you how you got that way, too. From a cop's bullet right across your head where that scar is. That so? Well, we'll know after you're examined, Morton. I can't see your point in delaying things any longer. Anything you say, D.A.? Huh? What do you want to know? I'll read the last question, will you please, Miss Miller? Yes, sir. Um, listen to reason, Morton. That watchman was killed with a thirty-two caliber slug. All right, we'll start from there. Now, where's the gun, Morton? Who was with you, Morton? Come on, use your head, man. We've got you. Why shield the others? In a pig's eye, you got me. You were there, Sonny. Right there waiting for me. All right, smart guy. Go ahead on that. Go on, D.A. Tell a jury I did it. Tell them. And you can also tell them I'm blind. For Pete's sake, Agnes, let's turn this thing towards land. Not till we need gas. Well, I'm going nuts, I tell you. Nothing but water. That's a nice crack. Huh? I'm here. Gee, I'll say you are. Just what do you mean by that? Oh, look, Agnes, we can't just spend the rest of our lives going nowhere. we got to get back to town. What for? Well, we're layered for one thing. Oh, now, look, I could call one of the boys, Agnes. They'll know if he's singing, maybe. He ain't, I told you. But that. we don't know, Agnes. Oh, it's driving me off my rock or not I told you before, relax. I'm telling you, head this tub toward the shore. No, thank you. Listen, you Uh, sleep brain little idiot. Let go of me. Get us back to hear me now. Go. Oh, Agnes, please. You'll look at my arm. I'll be black and blue. Will you listen to me, Agnes? Yes, this buster. I planned this show and I'm running it. You try any more rough stuff to help me, I'll toss you over the side. What time is it, Miss Miller? It's uh, 7.10, Chief. The day shift will be coming on at 7.30. Well, you ought to go on home. We can send for a stenographer downstairs. No, I'm all right, Chief, really. Is there any more coffee, Harrington? Yeah, plenty, Miss Miller, in that Oh, thanks. How about you, Morton? Feel like talking some more? Hey, Morton. The Chief's talking to you. Aren't you guys tired yet? Oh, boy, we got lots of time left, Morton. All day today, tonight, tomorrow, the next night. Who shot the watchman, Morton? Where's the gun, Morton? I'll get it, Chief. How'd you lose your sight, Morton? Yes. Pulling away from that oh, warehouse yes, job? Why well, don't you give up, Excuse Harrington? Me. Yes. That's the Harbor Patrol. Oh, hmm? let me have that. Yes, sir, right here. What's that, Miss Morton? Yes. The Harbor Hello. Patrol, Harrington. The chief right. phoned them about an hour ago from outside. You sure yeah. now? Yeah. You sure? The number is 20Y205. Yes, I'll repeat it. 20Y205. What's the matter, Laird? No. You look excited. No, I have a boat stand by, will you please? We'll be right out. Harrington, we've got it. Come on, let's go. No, Agnes, put away the gun, will you? I, I, I didn't mean to get rough. Shut up, Emily. Huh? It's a boat. See it coming up from the port side. Where? There. See it? What the... Rudy, that's a patrol boat. I don't get it. What patrol? What are you talking about? 20, by 205. Stand by to be boarded. Stand by my foot. Get out of my way, Rudy. Cut your motors and stand by. You're under arrest. Agnes, it's cops. Listen to them, Agnes. Don't you think I can hear? Get back, Rudy. They're coming alongside. On, stand by. We're coming aboard. Watch it, Chief. Get back. Get back or I start shooting. Agnes, don't be a fool. The boat's loaded with police. Cover me, Harrington. I'm right with you, Chief. Easy, Billy. Keep her alongside. The Chief's going over. You rats, I told you to get... Don't reach for that gun. Leave it on the deck. Okay, Chief. Here, wait till I cut these engines. Did I get her? 
Uh, just her arm, I think, Harrington. Stand still, both of you. Now, listen, I didn't do anything. Shut up, would... Rudy. What, you, can't you see I'm bleeding? Uh, we'll have you taken care of as soon as we get ashore. Take the man, Harrington. Right, Chief. No, you don't. Come on. Bring her up a little, Billy. All set? Now, let's take this pair back to town. <laughs> The district attorney will return in just a moment with an explanation of his capture of Agnes and Rudy. But first... Tell me, who should know best the difference between toothpaste? Who should know best the difference between toothpastes? Why, your dentist, of course. Your dentist is the skilled guardian of your dental health, the authority on care of your teeth and gums. So ask your dentist about Ipana toothpaste and gentle gum massage. Many dentists recommend gum massage. What's more... A nationwide survey reveals that more dentists recommend Ipana toothpaste than any other dentifrice. And wait a moment. More dentists personally use Ipana than any other toothpaste. There's a difference between toothpastes, all right. And dentists know that difference. Ipana cleans teeth clean, safely, too, without gritty abrasive. And followed by gentle massage, aids the health of your gums. Help your dentist help your smile. Begin now getting your new Ipana smile. Get Ipana toothpaste. Taste the freshness. Feel the cleanness. See the sparkle. See how you look with an Ipana smile. Ipana toothpaste. Now, here is your district attorney. I should like to report, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, that all three of this unusual trio, Laird Morton, his wife, and Rudy Bowie, will pay the full penalty demanded for the murder of the watchman in the transfer company office. I'll say they will, Chief. And that's the end of all those safe-cracking jobs on the list. Yes, Harrington, it is. Oh, Chief, I think you'd better explain just how you knew Agnes and Rudy were on a boat and which boat to go after. Well, we have Laird to thank for that, Miss Miller. As you know, when we found him, he had a pair of very good binoculars around his neck. Sure, Chief. A blind man with spyglasses. Exactly, Harrington. He intended to bring them to the boat for his wife and Rudy. Fortunately, this particular pair of binoculars was of a foreign make. I don't understand, Chief. Well, during the war and before, Miss Miller, all such foreign binoculars had to be registered with the proper authorities. Oh. When we examined the pair on Laird, I checked the registration and found them assigned to his boat. With the Coast Guard number 20Y205, right, Chief? Right, Harrington. And then when the harbor police reported sight of the vessel, we went right out. You certainly did, Chief. Well, it just goes to show what you've said so often, Chief. The crooks don't have a chance of winning, ever. Oh, indeed. For no criminal or criminal gang has the resources of the forces of law and order. And now what about next week? Well, our story for next week, ladies and gentlemen, is another colorful and exciting dramatization. It's the case of the House of Death, and I invite you to join us for it. And so until then, thank you and good night. Yes, man, the right dress for well-groomed hair. For your hair is Sentry. S-E-N-T-R-Y, Sentry Hair Cream. New liquid cream grooms hair without that unsightly, greasy look. What makes Sentry so different? Well, most hair creams are made with mineral oil, but not Sentry. Sentry's the only leading liquid hair cream made without mineral oil. No wonder Sentry grooms without an objectionable, greasy look. Guard your grooming with Sentry. S-E-N-T-R-Y. Sentry, Sentry Hair Cream, your right dress. The names of all characters in tonight's dramatization are fictitious, and any resemblance to names of living persons or actual places is purely coincidental. Our stars were Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Vola as Miss Miller. The music was under the direction of Peter Van Steeden. The program is produced and directed by Edward A. Byram and written by Robert Shaw. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. Remember, I pan a toothpaste for the smile of beauty. Sal Hepatica for the smile of health. Bristol Myers invites you to tune in again next week for Duffy's Tavern and Mr. District Attorney. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.